Hello guys, Game Boy Hub here. And today we're going to be doing another Windows RAM experiment. Now, the previous video I did on Windows XP, which you can check out in the iCard right now, did really, really well. So I'm definitely gonna continue doing these videos because you guys seem to like them. So today we're gonna be doing Windows 7, which is also one of my favorite Windows versions and also the Windows version that I used throughout the most of my childhood. We're going to be seeing what is the lowest amount of RAM that Windows 7 will run on. First, I'm going to be installing the normal Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1, so like the most normal vanilla release. And the same as last time, I'm going to be trying out a more lightweight version of Windows 11 next. So we're going to see how that will affect the RAM use. Usage. Also, the software that I'm going to be using today is VMware Workstation because that worked really well the last time. So yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy and let's get started with the video. So we are right here on our desktop, so let's enter VMware in order to create the normal Windows 7 virtual machine. So after we try the experiment with the normal version of Windows 7 Ultimate, we're gonna also try it with Windows 7 Super Nano Lite, which is a super, super lightweight version of Windows 7. So we're gonna see if the RAM requirement changes for the lighter version of Windows 7. I definitely think that it will change, but we'll see. So let's get into VMware and make a Windows 7 virtual machine. So we'll click on new virtual machine right here. We will select our Windows 7 Ultimate ISO from right here and I'll click next. Uh, we won't use this automatic install, so I'll just click next. Yes, and this is absolutely fine for the name. We'll give it 40 gigabytes of space, should be enough. So the minimum requirements actually do seem to be one gigabyte of RAM for uh, Windows 7 Ultimate. Let's see if we remove Ultimate right here. Yeah, we still get one gigabyte of RAM, which I didn't know. I thought it was at least 512 megabytes. So I guess we'll start right at the minimum requirements right here. But yeah, that should be absolutely fine. So let's just click finish and I'll just full screen the installation so we can continue. And here we go, now Windows are installing, so I'll be back when it's done. And here we are in the fully set up version of Windows 7 Ultimate, and even the full HD resolution works even without the graphics driver, which is pretty cool. And yeah, today I'm not gonna be installing VMware tools because you guys mentioned that that caused the graphical issues that we had on Windows XP. So yeah, the system functions just fine with one gigabyte of RAM. If we go to computer and then properties, you can see that we are running one gigabyte of RAM. So yeah, let's exit out of this and I'll lower it down to 512 megabytes and we'll see if the machine boots just fine. And we just shut off the machine, so let's switch it to 512 megabytes of memory and see how it runs under that. So we'll just click power on once again. Okay, and it seems to be booting absolutely fine with 512 megs. We'll see if it fully boots. And yeah, the machine booted up just fine with 512 megabytes of RAM. And it does seem to be pretty snappy. As you can see, it works completely fine. Yeah, I don't really know why they set the official minimum requirements to one gigabyte because this works just fine with half of that. If I was to turn on all of the arrow features like the transparency of the taskbar and windows, it probably would work way worse. But yeah, this seems just fine. I'll just show you that we are are running 512 megabytes of RAM. You can see that right here. So yeah, I guess let's switch to 256. And here we are at this menu once again. So let's go to 256 megabytes of RAM. Click OK and let's try powering on the machine. <laughs> and it actually seems to be booting just fine with 256 megabytes of RAM and we are truly not getting any of the graphical issues so I guess you guys were right about VMware tools causing that because this machine doesn't have it installed. So yeah, everything still seems to run pretty good as you can see. 
<laughs> we can't open chest titans because we do not have any 3D acceleration because of the drivers. And now everything's bugged. Oh no. Oh wait, we might we might be able to. Yeah, chest titans does work, but with the 2D option and it is extremely slow. But yeah, you can see the PC still runs with 256 megabytes. And here is the proof for you guys that we are running 256 megabytes. So 256 megabytes of RAM, 255 usable. Let's go down to 100. 128. I think we're getting in the area where it might not boot, but let's try it out. Here we go. We will lower this down to 128 megabytes. So now we're really getting in the low RAM territory. So let's see if Windows 7 Ultimate powers on. And oh my god, it looks like it will power on normally with 128 megabytes of RAM. And just as I said that, we get the blue screen of death. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I always eat my words in these experiments. Something always goes wrong just when I say that it might boot. Okay, let's try a restart and see if anything changes or will it just not boot with 128. And we will launch Windows normally. Yeah, pretty weird. It does show the little startup animation. But yeah, then it just blue screens. Interesting. So let's raise the memory up to something else maybe. Let's try 168 megabytes of RAM and see if that will boot. Nope, that also gives us a blue screen. Uh, let's maybe try 192 megabytes. Let's do 196 and see if it will boot like that. So I'll press OK and power on the virtual machine. Oh. And there we go. <laughs> we are booted into Windows 7 with 196 megabytes of RAM. Here it is, you can see it right here. So 196 megabytes work absolutely fine and the OS does boot. It is very crunchy. As you can see, it is not running smooth at all, but it did boot just fine with 196. So let's see where the limit is. Let's try out 180. 80 megabytes and see if it will boot with that. Nope, 180 megabytes doesn't boot. How about 184 megabytes? Nope, doesn't work. Let's go for 188. No, doesn't work with 188. Is 196 literally the exact limit? Let's try 192 because that is the only thing we can try. So I'll go up to 192 and see if that boots because it did boot with 196. And there it is. So with 192 megabytes, it does still boot, but with 188, it doesn't. So the limit for Windows 7 Ultimate seems to be 192. 92 megabytes of RAM. And here is the confirmation for that. The system is running on 192 megabytes, which is pretty crazy, you must admit. So now I'll go ahead and install the lightweight version of Windows 7 and we'll see what the RAM limit on that is. Let's hope that that one at least gets to 128 megabytes because that would be pretty cool. So we can shut this down and install the lightweight version. And here we are back in VMware. So let's make a new virtual machine for Windows 7 Super Nano Lite. So I'll just choose the ISO that I have on my desktop and click open and then I'll go ahead and click next. It is Windows 7 and I'll call it Windows 7 SNL for Super Nano Lite and click next. I'll give it 40 gigabytes once again and click next. So I'll give it a gigabyte of RAM just to start off with and I'll just click finish right here. And there is my virtual machine, so let's power it on. And I'm pretty sure this is the startup screen from Windows Vista, which is pretty interesting that they've included that. And yeah, everything is in the classic theme, so I guess it is a little bit less demanding. So I'll just click install Windows 7 now. I will accept the agreement and we'll go for custom 
we'll select our drive right here and there we go now it is installing windows 7 and it is pretty fast as you can see because this is a bare bones version of windows 7 so let's see exactly how long this installation takes but it is already asking us for a restart that was less than a minute so let's see if it just boots into the desktop right now okay and we got an error recovery so i'll just click start windows normally right here and hope that it will boot Huh, and we keep getting the blue screen, that is interesting. It just flashes for a single second and then it boots into this menu. Let's try safe mode. And yeah, just blue screens, that is so interesting. The safe mode doesn't even work, why is that? Let's see if it maybe needs more VRAM or something. That is the only thing that uh, I can come up with currently because it does have a gig of RAM, it should be absolutely fine, right? So let's go over to the hardware and let's see display. Okay, so we are giving it eight gigabytes of VRAM. Let's try like one gigabyte or something and I'll just click OK. Let's also give it a dual core processor maybe. So let's go for a number of cores too and click OK. And let's try to start it up right now and hope it works. Nope, we still get the blue screen. Huh, that is really interesting. Okay, let's just delete this virtual machine and I'll just try to install it once again. And let's hope that that works this time. And yeah, that unfortunately still blue screens. That is so interesting. Okay, let's try to look for another small version of Windows 7 and we'll see if we're able to install that, maybe. Okay, so I just downloaded another super light version of Windows 7. This one is just called Windows 7 Super Light. Okay, let's just make a new virtual machine then, just so we are sure that nothing messes up because of the old machine. So here we'll select the super light ISO and click next, Windows 7, I'll call this Windows 7 SL and we'll give it 40 gigabytes as we always do. And that's pretty much it, a gig of RAM is fine, so we'll just click finish and let's try booting this up. Okay, and this one also has a little bit of a different interface as it seems. So now the setup should hopefully start soon. Okay, and that collecting information took quite a long time, but here we are. So we'll install Windows 7 Superlight and we'll choose our disk right here. And now the normal copying files process will start. So let's just let this finish and I'll be back when it's done. And here we are in Windows 7 Super Light, and this version actually installed just fine. So we are just running it on the virtual machine here. Let's see if we can bump up the screen resolution to something more usable. And yes, we can. So I'll just put it at 1920 by 1080. And there we go. Now we are running Windows 7 Super Light in full HD, which is very nice. So as I said right now, we are on one gigabyte of RAM and everything works out absolutely fine. So yeah, let's just switch this to 512 megabytes. So here it says a gigabyte. Let's cut this in half and see if this OS still wants to boot normally. So we'll just click OK right here and power on the virtual machine. And it looks like it will boot just fine with 512 megabytes. And yeah, I was definitely right about that. So here we go. Everything else works normally and it is quite snappy still on 512 megabytes of RAM. So here you can see that it has been cut in half. So let's cut this in half once again. So we'll need to shut down the machine and let's cut the memory in half to 256 megabytes and click OK and let's power this on. And it looks like it will still boot normally, which is amazing. And yeah, there it goes. It just booted just fine with 256 megabytes of RAM. Now, the last time this was the cutoff, it didn't want to boot with 128 megs, but it did boot with 192 megabytes. That was the cutoff for the normal version of Windows 7. So let's check out how far this one goes. It seems a lot more snappy than the normal version. You can see that everything still works pretty much absolutely fine with... Uh, 
256 megabytes, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, all of the things are cut out of it. As you can see, it doesn't have any games. It doesn't have any materials. This is just a very low weight version of Windows 7. So let's just shut this down and let's try 128 megabytes. And I'm crossing my fingers that this actually works because that would be incredible. Windows 7 on 128 megabytes would truly be incredible. So let's power on the virtual machine and see what happens. Okay, and we do get the starting Windows logo just the same as the other version and it blue screens. So even the super light version won't boot with 128 megabytes. Let's try to go a little bit higher. Let's see if it will boot with, for example, 160 megabytes, maybe. So let's try that out and I'll click OK. So let's just hope that this one will at least boot with a little bit less RAM than the normal version. We'll go for a start windows normally. And yes, oh my God. This one actually boots with 160 megabytes. Would you look at that? 160 megabytes of RAM we are running and Windows 7 Superlight has booted pretty much normally. So they did definitely lower the requirements. The previous version wouldn't boot with less than 192 megabytes. This one boots just fine with 160, which is pretty incredible. I will try lower this of course so let's go down to 148 for example and let's try powering on the virtual machine and no we just get a blue screen <laughs> so yeah maybe for this one the 150 uh, megabytes mark is the cutoff so let's try going up to 152 and see if it will boot with that nope we still get the blue screen so the last thing we can try is 156 megabytes because it does boot with 160 so let's try 156 and if it doesn't boot then 160 is the cutoff and yeah it does actually blue screen even on 156. So for Windows 7 Superlight, 160 megabytes seems to be the cutoff. It is crazy that I just got that first try. Like I just set it at 160 and it booted and that is actually the cutoff. That is pretty crazy to me. So yeah, this software boots just fine with 160 megabytes. So I guess they did lower the requirements a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. And yeah, it is really choppy at 100 and 60 megabytes of RAM, of course, but it does still work and it is pretty usable. I could use this for some basic tasks. Web browsing probably wouldn't be very enjoyable, but you know, everything else like browsing the libraries works just fine. And yeah, that'll be pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Also, let me know in the comments which Windows version you want to see this experiment done to next. And also, we do have a join button now. So for as low as a dollar a month, you can really help out the channel. And you do also get some pretty cool perks with it, like early access to videos and some special emojis. Thank you guys for watching please check out my Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys in the next video.